A leader in business and public service, Jack Morris Raines was the 95th Secretary of State of Texas and a candidate for Governor of Texas in 1990. He is a lifetime director of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo and was inducted into the Museum of the Gulf Coast and named a person of distinction. Jack Raines' family spans eight generations and growing up in Texas, he developed high standards early, having achieved in Port Arthur in 1953 the rank of Eagle as a Boy Scout. If it hadn't been for Texas A&M, I would have never graduated from college because I was immature, undisciplined, and, uh, you know, I had long, greasy ducktails and uh, was kind of a street hood when I got there. Uh, they put your feet on a different path right away. When they take you in and shave your head, you say, something fundamentally is different about this place. And it comes home to you the first time you look in a mirror. When I was, went to a &M, everyone was in the Corps, unless you were a veteran or disabled. Um, and of course, there were no women there, so there were a few in the summer. But So everyone went in the Corps, and you worked towards contract. Well, I wanted to fly airplanes, as my older brother had during World War II. So uh, I qualified for a Category 1 contract, which was a flight contract. The former dean of admissions, Ed Cooper, said, said, Rains, when you came up here, there were three qualifications for admission. You had to be a high school graduate, a resident of the state, and free of infectious and contagious diseases. And he said, I know for a fact that the coaching staff argued that two out of three wasn't bad and they ought to let you in. a and was not a place in, in College Station that you want to spend a lot of time in under any circumstances. It was pretty drab. Now upon the Texas 14, Crow rides again. Here's an All-American way toward the goal line for 12 yards to the Texas two-yard strike. Well, I started at a place called Junction, Texas. We went to summer school in Junction. And uh, so when I got to A&M, it looked lush and green compared to Junction. Uh, I going from Port Arthur out to Junction. Junction was just a flat um, piece of gravel out there, and it had a stream about this wide uh, running through it that was uh, that had a 30-year drought, I think. So the whole countryside was burned up. I saw two lizards carrying canteens out there. That's how dry it was. Because of your preparation and the things I'm trying to get across to you, you can beat him because you paid 85. And if we do that as a team, 11 at the time, well, four years from now, uh, you'll be walking out of here as a national champion. And I'll tell you this, I expect nothing less. Coach Brown had an impact on everything at a and I'm a bullet, had nothing, to, you know, Never contributed anything to anything, but he, all, he knew my name. He was always uh, kind, and uh, the guys he was really the toughest on were the ones with the most talent. And because uh, he knew he wasn't getting everything they had. His devotion to creating and growing businesses was enriched by his Aggie spirit and support for Texas A&M's many student and former student organizations and college programs, including athletics. When Jackie Sherrill came down to A&M, uh, of course, I was a former student running a business, and Jackie went around making rounds, talking to the ones of us that had some connection to A&M, the athletic department, and he said, I'm going to need your help. I've got some ideas, things I want to do, and uh, I'm going to bounce them off of you. He said, I want to involve the student body. He said, the greatest student body. And he said, do you think they'll, they'll 
come out to try out for the football team. And uh, as they say, the rest is history. And it was a wonderful tradition. We had the 12th man tradition, but it, it tied that knot between the student body and uh, the kids on the field. It's one of the loudest stadiums in the nation. My daughter Sherry is uh, was my first Aggie, and uh, she went off to to A and M. Uh, I was a little shocked when she said that's where she wanted to go to school. Uh, she said, "No, I want to go to A and M. You know, we've been on the campus a lot. I'm comfortable there. My friends are going. That's where I want to go to school." Well, I made some calls up there and talked, and I found out there were women actually going to school up there. I had not been back on campus, you know. I, Everything I was involved with with a &M was in Houston or New York. And Brown <laughs> set sail after number 11. They took something that was, you know, a myth or fiction and put it to real life. You know, in 1982, I was um, a fifth year senior. I was one that crammed four into five. Uh, but I was a graduating senior and I met him and I remember when the 12th man kickoff team came on. I mean, the place went nuts. We thought it, the students thought that was the greatest thing. I, it, it's just, it, the, we all knew who was trying out for the team or some of us knew who, who were trying out and they were like, you know, everybody, all those guys were heroes and who made it. And then when they came out, it was unbelievable. But I thought that was such a great thing to do. A&M is a special place, and I worried. I did worry about when women were admitted, would we maintain that esprit de corps, that camaraderie, that closeness? Each year he traveled the world speaking to Aggies clubs and at muster. Jack Raines gave selflessly of his time and resources to support the dramatic changes happening at Texas A&M. To this day, A&M has gained a reputation for being the friendliest campus in the world. It, it is the world's largest uh, fraternity sorority. Uh, there's a kinship there. Uh, I wear my ring. A lot of people don't wear their rings from their school. This ring's been around the world umpteen zillion times. Uh, and uh, people will come up and whip out, and uh, I do the same thing when I see one. Well, I hope A&M's future continues to move in the direction that it is now. And that's as a global university that has a, a, a world vision, not just a local vision. I want us to continue to serve the people of Texas, but part of that service is it's preparing them to compete in a global economy and, and in a globe that is bound closer together. Aggies. Aggies. Whoop.